Hey, hola. Hola, hola, hola. K1 Green Mountain Maniac. Uh, this is the 20 meter delta loop I'm running. Uh, self supported. Base is probably roughly 18, 20 feet. Uh, the summit, not sure. Uh, it's built on Shakespeare Wonder Poles, as you've seen in my other video. I have a 4 to 1 on it. Zoom in. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. And you probably can't see it, so let's zoom out. I'm going to share a few thoughts on this, uh, what I found. So I just wanted to show you that, and I'm going to get in the shack and uh, sit down and, and go through a couple things. Some observations a friend of mine and I had regarding this quite remarkable antenna. Be back. Hey, we're back. Go through a couple things regarding feed points, how to feed a, a delta loop, and how to orient it. My delta loop is oriented apex down. My friend Al, G7RHF, his delta loop is oriented apex up, fed from the bottom corner, uh, apex up. Mine is fed from the bottom apex, apex down. I'll show you why that may be important. Uh, let's look at Al's antenna first. Uh, this is um, uh, the radiation pattern of this is a 75 millimeter meter delta loop. Don't pay any attention to that. This is general rule of thumb on uh, delta loops. Uh, these are 20 meter loops we're talking about, the two. And you'll notice the angle of radiation uh, and the shape of it. On the, on the way my friend Al's loop is configured. Very, very good. It's, it's vertically polarized based upon where it's fed from right here in this bottom corner. And it's very squashed. You'll see this right here. Very good for DX, low angle of radiation. I'll show you what mine looks like. Okay, this is mine. Uh, mine is fed apex down from the bottom center, uh, the bottom apex. Uh, with a moderately high angle of radiation. Here's the view here on the vertical plane, what it looks like. Uh, you'll notice that his gain, it, you'll notice that this is nowhere near as squashed uh, as, as the one his, it, the way his is configured, he's using. Now, this is interesting. Uh, a friend of mine, KB3UFB, has been working into South Pacific between 12 a.m. and 3 a.m. in the mornings on 20 meters. I didn't think 20 meters was open like that at that hour. So last night I did a whisper run. We both did, Al, G7RHF, and myself with our Delta Loops. He's in the U.K. I'm here at East Coast in the state of Vermont, and we did whisper runs. He did a limited run last night. I ran mine all night just to see what I'd hear or where I'd get into at that hour on the delta loop he ran his delta loop as well so let me go over to so really quick before i make the jump out of here uh, as you can see if you go online you'll see all the different ways to feed a delta loop and how to orient it and you can see the patterns uh, here uh, based upon how it's fed this is fed in the bottom center apex up uh, this is uh, center at the base of the antenna, very high angle of radiation. Um, this is more like mine, but configured a little differently. Uh, this is fed. This is fed from the top corner, apex down. So this is closer. Uh, this is closer to what Al was running, except his, remember, was, this is inverted, his was apex up. So there's, yeah, there's all these variations, a very flexible antenna. So let me get the whisper map. I'll grab the whisper map here. Hold on just for a second. Where are you? There we go. Okay. And we'll go ahead and expand this a little bit. So this was the whisper run from last night. It's about a 12-hour run. But believe it or not, this ZL right here came right in that window, 12 a.m. to 3 a.m. And if you know my QTH, the, and you're probably asking yourself, well, why don't you run the Delta Loop 
in more of a DX configuration with a lower angle of radiation. The problem I have here is I have a 4,000 foot mountain on my west side which is virtually NVIS comes straight up off my doorstep. I'm at 600 feet in elevation on the valley floor. In less than a quarter mile across the street I have Baker Peak which is uh, 3,000 feet and that comes straight up off the valley floor. I do have a relatively good takeoff to uh, Europe. What I'm curious about though is I don't punch in further into Europe. Now Al, who's located right in here, I believe you can't see it because of the cluster here, he go, goes east very, very well. He also runs an OCF, a 20 meter OCF, which is a Kraken antenna, his QTH. Um, he goes east all the way into Asia, um, into Alaska, very, very good. Uh, but the delta loops, uh, this gives you an idea of how, it, how effective they are. Uh, this was on 5 watts on Whisper Run. Um, I, also, I was heard in West Coast, which is very difficult here. I was heard in Alaska, and I was heard in New Zealand. And uh, I could not punch into this station, Hotel Zulu, once here at Kilo. I heard him, but he did not hear me. This is about the limit. So make of it what you will. I just wanted to share that, uh, some observations regarding 20-meter delta loops extremely effective I believe and they don't take up a lot of space and you can hang them uh, put them in a freestanding on a freestanding pole uh, with some kind of spreaders you can make them out of aluminum you can do all kinds of stuff with them very flexible and you can make them portable as well just share my thoughts on that all right thanks for watching uh, hope you are as intrigued as I am with this antenna uh, I really like them uh, very very effective and yes they are directional if you turn it off to the side uh, they're very directional. Uh, so when you open the aperture of the antenna to the station you want to work, and then if you were to turn it to the side, yes, it does fall off quite a bit. So uh, by directional antenna, there you go. Uh, 7-3, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the band somewhere sometime. The